Hi, my name is José Rodrigues dos Santos and I am the author of the novel The God Formula, published in English under the title The Einstein Enigma. I'm here today to introduce you to the Einstein Enigma and bring you along on a journey to uncover the biggest mystery of them all, the existence of God. People around the world gather in churches in their own spiritual search for God. Or they may do it in mosques or in synagogues or in any other religious temples. But what I want to tell you today is that God is not exclusively a religious issue. He is a scientific mystery as well. And the Einstein Enigma is a novel about the scientific proof of God's existence. To bring about that proof, we first need to establish one crucial thing. What is God? Some people imagine God as an old patriarch with a white bird that looks at the world, that looks after each one of us, that listens to our prayers, that protects us all. That God, science has not found. If you look through the end of a telescope on a starry night, no such entity will be visible. It's simply not there. So, how does science find God? First, it deals with God not as a supernatural entity, but as something natural. Second, it looks at the universe and searches for two things, intelligence and intention. Is the universe intelligent? <laughs> That's an easy one. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's very intelligent. Just look around you and you'll find clever things everywhere. But what if that intelligence is merely accidental? That's why finding intelligence in the universe is not enough to prove God's existence. You also need to find intention. And make no mistake, this is a crucial question. You see, if the universe is accidental, there is no God and life has no meaning. It's just an accident. But if the universe is intentional, then there is God, and yes, life has a meaning. We may not know what that meaning is, but it has a meaning. Thing is, how in hell do we find intention? Let us suppose that I find a flower lying on the ground. I will think, well, this is a flower, a natural thing, and I won't think about it anymore. But let us suppose that instead of a flower, I find a pen. I will think, oh, here's a pen. I know a pen has a purpose and someone invented it with an intention to write. I may not know personally who that inventor is, but I know someone invented the pen with an intention. Now, if I can say this about something as simple as a pen, why can't I say the same about a flower, which, by the way, is a much more clever and complex and intelligent device than a mere pen. Why can't I say the same about the nature that surrounds us, which is infinitely much more intelligent than a mere pen? Why can't I say the same about the universe? Aren't the trees and the clouds and the rain and the planets and the stars much more complex and intelligent creations than a pen? Look at the extremely intelligent way a cell divides in two, and then in four, and then in eight, and so on, in a process that in nine months ends up with a human being. Why do I accept that a pen is an intelligent device created by someone with an intention? And I cannot say the same about people, life, our planet, the universe. Suppose I ask an engineer, what is television? He's going to open up a TV set and say, well, television is a device with chips and wires and electrical stuff. And he's right, of course, television is chips and wires and electrical stuff. But it's much more than that, isn't it? Television is also about news programs, sports, soap operas, reality shows, quiz games, talk shows. Television is a software running on a hardware. Likewise, if you ask a scientist, what is the universe? He will say, well, the universe is quarks, 
electrons, protons, atoms, planets, stars, constellations, galaxies, clusters. He's right, of course, that's the hardware of the universe. But what is its software? What is its program? Imagine there's a small ant walking on top of this beautiful Persian rug. And I'll, I'll say to the ant, oh, what a beautiful rug you're walking on. And the ant, she'll say to me, what in hell are you talking about? This is some red and black stuff I'm walking on. There's nothing beautiful about it. So if I want the ant to see how beautiful this rug is, I have to lift her from the ground and show her the rug from a vantage point. And only then, will she see how beautiful the rug is. We are ants walking on top of a rug. We are engineers looking at the universe. We are inside the hardware and unable to watch the show. The Einstein Enigma is a novel that lifts you from the ground and shows you the rug from a vantage point. This is a novel that looks beyond the hardware to show you the program running on the universe. And this is done through a fictional love and spy story that begins in 1951, when scientist Albert Einstein meets the Israeli Prime Minister and starts to work on a mysterious manuscript called The God Formula. The manuscript includes an enigma laid by Einstein himself and remains hidden for decades until it shows up in Iran in the midst of the crisis involving the Iranian nuclear project. In the quest for this document, top historian Thomas Nuronia teams up with the CIA and travels to Iran. The journey takes him also to the Putala, the Dalai Lama's palace in Tibet, where he finally meets the true and scientific face of God. The Einstein Enigma is a novel about the scientific proof of God's existence. And I promise you, by the end of the book, you will have a conclusive answer to the biggest mystery in the universe, the existence of God and the meaning of life. I hope you enjoyed the journey.